Hi, I'm Marika Timmers, and this is The Ethical Entrepreneur, a speaker series to inspire new business owners to go ahead and create the business of their dreams, but also existing business owners to make the changes they may need to, to inject more purpose into their businesses. It is my personal goal this year to inspire as many of you as I can to make a difference in the world through business. And in line with that today, I am super excited to introduce you all to Amanda Curtis from Enabled. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure. Amanda is co-founder and CEO of Enabled, which is an on-demand production software that enables inventory-free retailing of apparel. As a fashion designer, Amanda went from New York Fashion Week, designing for Richie Rich, DVF, and A-list celebrities like Ellen DeGeneres to bringing a solo design collection all the way to London Fashion Week in her first season. Eight years ago, she entered into the tech startup world and learned firsthand the efficiency and potential of the space for fashion. Amanda was a Forbes 30 under 30 in 2016, NRF's person shaping retail's future in 2018, She's a mentor at Techstars and a mentor with AOLs built by girls. Very impressive accomplishments so far, Amanda. And I guess a lot of that starts with or comes back to your purpose and your mission. Um, and that is to make the way products come to market, the way they're made, are sold, better for everyone. So how does Enable to align with that mission? Absolutely. So Enables is a different way of approaching how products and um, just brands launch. When I first started in the industry, I saw just how much waste there was um, from time to materials to a total lack of sustainability and technology in the process. So my co-founder, Gemma Sol, and I decided to build a platform for brands where they could launch product um, as lean as a tech startup launches a product, basically enabling them to, um, to basically create product in a short amount of time, a matter of weeks instead of months and months and months mm -hmm. and go to market, put it in front of consumers and make it on demand in an ethical way. So enabled allows for brands to digitize that product development process uh, it gives them a platform to create basically what's in the industry called tech packs, digitize all the information needed to create a product, and then send that information to a network of vetted manufacturers who have committed to doing things sustainably and have committed to doing things on demand quick turn. This allows for brands to basically operate business how they want. Um, the best way we see is an on-demand model, which means that brands don't need to hold inventory. They can actually use our platform to facilitate this on-demand production where their product is made in real time. And those updates from the manufacturer as the product is being made is actually going back both to the brand and to the end consumer. So really creating this plug and play supply chain to enable brands to be sustainable and more efficient. Yeah, so reinventing the whole the whole business model behind yeah. <laughs> apparel no design deal. and production, right? Basically, basically, we turn the entire business model on its head, and the way that we did that is through this technology platform. Yeah, and you were a fashion designer originally. So, what made you branch into fashion tech? Yeah. Um, so, design has always been like my first love, and when I was in the industry working for brands, you know, starting from small startups like Richie Rich working for a season to more established like DBF and Maddie P. London. I saw a lot of practices that I didn't agree with ethically as a designer. Um, and I also just saw a lot of waste. We were spending tons of money on runway shows and PR and marketing. Um, but when you actually looked at the core business, it was a lot of upfront investment and a lot of time just to get the product to market and no way to actually see if it was going to work. And I thought when I got my own brand that 
maybe, just maybe I'd understand better or do things a little bit differently. And lo and behold, um, I experienced the same exact issues. And the issue, when I really boiled it down, was around supply chain. I couldn't find the right manufacturers. It took me six months to find the right partner. There's no guarantee that that partner would still be around at the end of the day. I had no negotiation power on the pricing. And by the time I actually got that collection ready and to market, I had no more funds left. Um, So as a small startup, it was really, really tough. So it was really just like across the board, seeing this issue in the business model of fashion and deciding let's look at a different industry. Um, I actually decided to get involved in the tech startups space because what I saw in that space was all of these companies taking the same amount of funding that would typically go into one collection and creating a billion dollar company. And to me, that was like, okay, they're doing something right. The fashion industry is not up to speed on this. What can I learn? So I was first hired um, at a tech startup and I learned the secrets essentially of lean methodology, of um, just trial and error and MVPs and putting things out in front of consumers before it was even in some cases actually created. And that was just that light bulb moment of, wow, if we could apply that same um, business methodology to the fashion industry, it could really be a huge game changer from like a whole different um, way of thinking about it beyond just, this is a good business model. It just makes sense. You could add in more sustainable practices. You can get more feedback from consumers. So Gemma and I decided, okay, let's flip this thing on its head. (laughs) And that was really kind of that moment of like combining those two worlds and those two experiences to design something new. And for me, that mission became more important than my own designs. The ability to help an industry do better um, and the ability to help other brands actually succeed both from a financial perspective, but a longevity perspective and sustainability perspective. That was more appealing to me. Um, And, you know, the fashion industry is the second largest industry in the world. It has a huge, huge impact if we can make it even incrementally better, then I think that's a, that's a big win. Absolutely. Um, so I guess what I heard in that was um, openness to learn um, and that the solutions are quite often out there in other industries that, you know, if, if we can take what works in one industry and apply it to another. Um, yeah. We yeah, can, as you say, flip it on your head, flip it on its head. Absolutely. I think um, what I've personally learned as a, a creative person is that business can be incredibly creative as an endeavor. Yes. And that was very surprising to me. So being able to be flexible, to be creative, to try new things in different ways um has allowed us to really revolutionize an entire industry yeah yeah and the other thing I heard you say then was that the purpose kind of took on a life of its own (laughs) um and that seems to be you know a common theme with um a lot of people that I speak to particularly around this summit um do you think that's a, a trend that we can expect to see more of in the in the fashion industry and and if so, what do you think is driving that? Yeah, well, I think um, purpose before profit or profit follows <laughs> is definitely something that we stay true to. Um, yeah, I think as entrepreneurship grows, as the ability to launch new ideas becomes just easier through technology and other forms, you're going to see um, more purpose-driven businesses. I also think that Um, now with business, you have to have some sense of purpose and you have to be very transparent about that purpose because your clients, your customers, whether you're B2B, B2C, B2B, B2C, everyone sees through, um, or wants to see through to actually what your core values are and what your mission is. I, I don't think you can kind of hide behind, um, 
just the front face of the business anymore. You have to be very transparent. That's what people expect, especially now um, in 2021. So I think you're going to see even more established companies kind of going back to what is their purpose? What is their mission? How do, how am I going to be more clear about that? And that's a lot harder for businesses that are established and um, are more complex. It's a little bit easier for businesses that are just starting up um, with that core mission already in place to be more transparent about it from the get-go. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so you've, you know, you've been in that industry for over a decade. Mm -hmm. What, what changes have you seen in that in that time towards a, a more sustainable model? Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of leaders in the space trying to push for a more sustainable model, whether it be through material innovation, um, business model innovation, um, manufacturing practices, etc. I think that the fashion industry, which kind of, I guess really prides itself on change. You know, we're rapidly releasing new things. Yeah. There's always something yeah. um, exciting. As a business has been traditionally very hesitant to change. And what I'm seeing now in um, kind of a COVID or post COVID world is this push to, they have to change. There's no, there's no more time. There's no more green. You can't hide behind greenwashing. You can't hide behind, oh, we'll do it in a few years. It's more, okay, we should have been doing this for the past five. We now need to rapidly change our model. Um, we need to be more sustainable um, because the consumer is demanding it now. They're more educated yeah. And just from a business perspective, we need to be more sustainable because that's how we're going to survive. And I think that supply chain has really taken um, a front seat in all of this because what we've, as an industry, I think we've experienced over the past year is just how fragile supply chains can be mm-hmm. and how important they are to the business. Um, and at the same time, that consumer kind of mindset has shifted as well. Consumers want transparency more than ever, not even want, demand it. Um, They want accountability. They want to understand how their products are made, who is making them, um, why they're purchasing it. Like people are more cognizant of how they're spending their time and their money now. Um, So I'm super excited by all these changes that are rapidly kind of pushing the industry forward because that means that there's a huge opportunity to do things better. And I see a lot of larger companies paying attention to what we're doing and others are doing Mm -hmm. and actually starting to implement, which is awesome to see. Yeah. So I guess the smaller businesses and the more agile um, as they, as they grow and become, you know, more noticeable to those, those bigger companies, um, they are leading the change, right? And and influencing the bigger the bigger companies. So I guess Absolutely. that whole, you know, I'm too small, what what difference <laughs> am I gonna make? Just goes out yeah. the window. Yeah, and it's super amazing to kind of see all of these smaller businesses have this much impact. Mm-hmm. And I think now more than ever, there's a huge advantage to being a smaller business. Um, and to attracting the right audience and to being able to like authentically tell a story that larger brands just are going to have a harder time with. Um, So there's a huge opportunity for anyone out there who's thinking of starting a brand or um, has uh, is just kind of at the beginning of their journey. There's never been a better time to break into the industry because there's a lot of space now. There's a lot more opportunity, um, which is a little bit counterintuitive (laughs) when you're going through a global crisis, but um, I really do think like now, now is a really great time to start a business. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And that's why we're doing <laughs> this, this speaker yeah. series in the first 90 days of 2021, squeezing it in there. Um, we've got time for just one, one more question, Amanda. And that is, um, that's a question that I ask a number of, of my speakers because um, obviously our audience out there, a, a lot of them will be in this situation. But as a business founder, if you knew when you were starting out what you now know, what would you do differently? (laughs) 
Well, I feel like I could write a novel on this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there are so many different things. Um, I think that if I knew what I knew now, I would ask for more up front. Um, I always had the grander, bigger vision. I don't think I totally understood just how much um, would be needed to build that grander, bigger version or how long it might take. So especially as a female entrepreneur, we tend to um, under ask and it's hard to access capital. So I think in the beginning I would have asked for more um, and would have just been a little bit more bullish on the fundraising side of things, which is unique to the tech startup space. Um, Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, being able to have said, you know, we built this company um, on kind of a bootstrapped or what we call stiletto strapped um, budget has actually made my co-founder and I much better entrepreneurs and has made the business a lot stronger and we've retained majority ownership. So I can't say I I might not follow my own advice also knowing um, what I know now on the flip side, but I guess just boiling it down, it's, it's just to think bigger than you already are. Um, because the possibilities are literally endless and um, yeah, you don't want to sell yourself short. Right. So back yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Commit. Awesome. Um, Enabled are also offering a free tech pack and free trial. I understand. Do you want to just tell everyone a little bit more about that? Sure. Absolutely. So enabled is for both Um, brands who are established, but also for people who have absolutely no background in manufacturing or design, you can get started on Enable too. If you've just had an idea or a dream of creating a product or a brand, you can get started. We have a two-week free trial, so you can connect to our platform, um, get access to all our services, create tech packs. We have ready-made tech packs in there. So even if you don't have a product in mind, um, you can start with something that we already have um, within the platform. So there's a hopefully an easy way to get to market faster in that in that perspective. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story and all of your insights of the fashion industry with us today. Um, it is an industry that hasn't always had the best rep for sustainability. So it's really encouraging to see businesses like yours using the tools of modern technology um, to solve a lot of these issues. And I'm very pleased to hear that the tides are changing um, and super excited for the possibilities that this brings for our audience, um, for you guys out there. You know, is the fashion industry something you're looking to tackle? Um, if so, hopefully today has given you some inspiration and some tips um, on how to get started. For more, tune in tomorrow. You're not going to want to miss this one. Cheers.